years, we've seen a whole host of famous faces strip off and bear all in the name of charity. <laughs> No, ITV Strictly the Real Full Monty is back with a lineup that includes Christine McGuinness. <laughs> Theme this year, I'm thinking about taking it back. Old school, glitz and glamour, a real music and dance spectacular. We're going to be in Blackpool and we're going to be in the 3000 capacity Empress Ballroom, which is oh. it's one of the largest ballrooms in the world. And then there's the strip. <laughs> I want the strip to be even more intense than it's been over the last couple of years. I feel really faint. You That's feel... how I feel. I feel faint. I feel faint. faint. Why what are you are you scared? I'm I'm not really great in busy places. We're all with you. And yeah. they're all there for you as well. Yeah. Every single one of the people in this room are gonna be cheering yeah. for you. Yeah. Christine. I'm speechless, only because of the conversation we had during John Turrode making salmon <laughs> in the Highlands of Scotland. Uh, but we'll get there, we'll reveal all uh, okay. to everyone watching. Um, you did this for one reason, one reason only. Tell us why you decided to, to strip off. Um, ultimately, to try and save lives, you know, to, to encourage people to check themselves and not be embarrassed about it. You know, there's so many people that avoid going to the doctors because they don't want to take the clothes off and, and get checked. But, you know, early detection really can save your life. So all of us have taken part in this show, The Real Full Monty, and it's got a strictly spin on it this year um, to try and help and raise awareness. And you're doing it it's for cancer research, right, I think? Yeah, well, for me, yeah, for cancer, for all, every, every cancer, you know, that supports any cancer patients and the families as well. Mm. Um, but for me, there was a very, very personal reason, and that is that I've had four aunties that have had cancer. One sadly passed away, three of them are doing brilliant. And then my mum last year found a lump during the pandemic, and she was diagnosed with aggressive breast cancer. Um, she had to have the most intense treatment that you can get, and she had to do it on her own during, during oh. lockdown. So that's why I done it for my mum. I know she helps you a lot with the kids, so that must have been really stressful for you. Yeah, she's the best nana ever. Honestly, this cancer tore our family apart. Cancer's cruel. You know, it was just an awful time. And to not be able to be there for her, give my mum a cuddle when she was going through the worst time of her life, oh. that was just awful. So when I was asked to take part in The Real Full Monty, it was, it was a yeah, straight away. And then I got there and kind of went, oh my God, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? And, and I froze and I panicked so much and I'm kicking myself now thinking, why didn't I just enjoy it from the beginning? But towards the end, I settled down and I did enjoy it and I miss everyone. Okay, well, we've, actually, we've got a clip of, of you struggling. You mentioned it there, so let, let, let's see it. It's just so much bigger than what I thought it was gonna be. Um, I just don't want to let everyone down. I overthink everything. I over worry. I panic. And my mind can run away with me. Autism is a hidden disability. And that's something that I'm battling with. It's always there. I feel like everyone's OK, and I don't want to be the one that isn't. <laughs> So at that time, Christine, you'd only just been diagnosed with autism, but you didn't let people know. No, at the time I, no, no. I just wanted to try and be like everyone else, and I've done that all throughout my life. And I've known for a while that there was there was something. I always felt different, and um, with this, I just wanted to go into a TV show and, and try and fit in and be like everyone else. And everyone seemed to just be getting on with it. Everyone had the little moments, but I really felt like. I was struggling, I was having panic attacks, I needed time out every single day during lunch. I would go off on my own and try and calm down. And um, yeah, recently I was diagnosed with autism. I've got three autistic children and um, it, it makes sense. And now I understand myself and I understand why I found everything so overwhelming and, and I didn't feel like everyone else. So you struggle when you meet people for the first time, is that yeah. right? Yeah, I really do. Um, I've never been <laughs> really social. I'm good at small talk, but I don't have an awful lot of friends. I've always been quite a loner and um, I struggle to build relationships. So whilst I'm OK with, with a, a polite hello and, and a small little conversation, moving on from that, I, I really, really struggle with, so I don't really have friends. So during this show, you were literally throwing yourself in the deep end. You yeah. were with a group of strangers, you were in uh, the Blackpool Ballroom, which holds 3,000 people. Yeah. You've got Ashley Banjo teaching yeah, you dance moves, and you're going to take your clothes off, and you're going to see everyone else 
Stalkers. I've, I've seen everyone and every <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what we were laughing about earlier on. <laughs> I've seen far too much on that show, but it was all for a good cause. But, um, but yeah, just spending a lot of time with people, for me, is something that I haven't done before. I've never stayed overnight with people that I don't know and then had to work with them all day, create conversation, eat with them. I just found it all too much at times. But towards the end of it, I did calm down. Could you say you're a recluse? I was a recluse during my 20s, so I had about eight years of just staying in at home, not really going out, just avoiding every birthday, every wedding, people coming to the house, everything, I would, I would find any excuse to not see people. So I'm trying to set an example for my children. You know, my, my three children are all autistic and I want them to live a good life and go out and get jobs and make friends and have relationships. I want them to do all of those things that I struggle with. And to do that, I think they need to see mummy do it. So I really want to keep pushing myself and keep doing stuff. It was fun. It was really, really fun in the end. It was amazing. And what you and Paddy have done for the autism awareness is, is amazing because you did the Thank documentary you. together. You made people realise what you guys have been going through, but also relatable to the viewers as well. And I you've had so many plaudits saying congratulations and well done and thank yous from other parents. It's, it's been amazing. And I think from that, doctors have probably been inundated with, with people yeah. taking themselves and the children. Um, it's a massively misunderstood condition. You know, I hide it very, very well and I think it was it was spotted amongst me, me followers on Instagram for a couple well, of Paddy years. Spotted it as well, didn't my he? husband, yeah, he, he obviously knows me better than anybody, and yeah, it's it, it's been a huge relief for me to get diagnosed and to be able to talk about it openly. And actually, people have been really, really kind and not judgmental about it. I think people want to understand now. Yeah, good. Was um, was it difficult to film that show? It was. It was. It was an emotional roller coaster. it really was, but ultimately it, it's helped. It's helped raise awareness, it's helped people understand, and it's really opened up conversation between me and my husband, which I think is the best thing that can come out of it. And for my children to know that mummy is autistic too, you know, that's going to make things better for them when they're older. We haven't spoke to them about their diagnosis yet, but when we do, at least I can just say to them, you know, mummy, mummy works, mummy's trying to make friends now, and well, mummy's going out, mummy's married, you know, so they can do all of those things too. And I got to ask, what does Paddy say? What did he think of you stripping off? Do you know, he was, he's he was... your biggest fan, isn't he? <laughs> I hope so. Me only he's got to be recording it, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> he was there, he came to watch me, and um, he, was, he was really proud. He knows that, you know, we were doing all of this for cancer. We want people to check themselves. And um, he came to see the performance. But he knew that I was going to struggle being away from home so much and being with people that I didn't know. But he's, he's been brilliant. Yeah, he, he must be so proud that, you, you know, you... You're pushing yourself, you're, you're moving forward, yeah. and it's great to see. And it's on tonight, right? It's on tonight and tomorrow. It's on tonight and tomorrow, ITV, 9 o'clock, tune in. It's an amazing show. I can't wait to see it. Look well, nor can it. we. Thank you, Christine, yeah, so yeah, much for having me. Big round of applause, everyone. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well done, Christine. Awesome. <laughs>